Hi, Seth David here from Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing you yet another wonderful webcast. Hopefully, over the course of the next 10 minutes, you're going to get a little bit smarter than you were 10 minutes prior, after we're done. Right now, it's the beginning, so you're not there yet. So, We're talking about cash versus accrual basis accounting and QuickBooks. How does it look? How does it work? A lot of people ask me, what's the difference between cash and accrual accounting? And I tell them, you know those Pepsi commercials where the girl at the counter in the fast food restaurant asks the guy, do you want it to hurt now or later? Actually, it's got nothing to do with that, but it sounded good. The reality is cash and accrual basis, it works a little bit like this. The accrual method is based on an accounting principle known as matching. And what it says is we want to recognize income in the period in which it was earned, and we want to recognize as expenses in which they were incurred. And expenses incurred, income is earned. We want to match those up properly. So, for example, if I'm paying rent, let's say I paid rent late. I paid uh, my May rent. I didn't pay till June, and assume I paid June's rent on time. Well, on a cash basis, I'm going to show double the rent expense in June and no rent in May, and it's not going to look right. And the reality is, when I'm analyzing the numbers, I want the data to look normal. I want to be able to see, you know, even though I had paid it late, the reality is May's rent was was for May. It was because I had the use of the office during the month of May. And so I want to show the expense then because I want to be able to look at the numbers and say, here's what it took for me to operate my business in the month. Forget about when I paid it or if I paid it. I have to pay it at some point. So here's what I here's what it took to run my business for the month of May. And then I want to look at the invoices I posted. Even if the customers haven't paid me yet, I want to say, here's what I earned. Here's the income I earned. And really, I want to be able to say, if nothing else, I want to make sure that I earned enough income to pay all those expenses so that eventually, when all the customers have paid, theoretically, I'll have enough money to pay off all the expenses. That's what accrual is really all about. Of course, cash basis says I don't recognize it until I've either received it, if it's income, or paid it, if it's an expense. And tax-wise, a lot of small businesses will go on a cash basis. Usually you do, and that's where a lot of business owners will come to me and say, I don't understand this cash. What's the difference, cash accrual? And I explain to them, look, the reality is you file your tax return on a cash basis, but accrual is how we really run the books because we're posting invoices and we're entering bills, and this is where we start to get into what it looks like in QuickBooks. So let me uh, blow up my screen here, and I'll share it with you so that I can actually demonstrate for you what this looks like. It's always much easier to understand and see it in action. So we give you live QuickBooks action right here. This is like the NASCAR of QuickBooks. Live action. I started a brand new company file just for you. We're going to set these dates to be this fiscal year so you can see I have no tricks up my sleeve. Bring this down a little bit. Nothing here. Now, let us record a deposit first so that we can uh, start us ourselves off with some money here. So we're going to say we, opened, we started the business with uh, $10,000 in the account. Just put that in open balance equity. And there it is in my balance sheet. Perfect. So now let's go enter a bill. So we're going to have to pay the landlord rent. Let's just say it's 2500 rent expense. Save and close. Notice it shows up right away on my profit and loss because I'm on an accrual basis. Over here on the uh, balance sheet, I've got my accounts payable, $2,500, because I haven't paid it yet. Let's switch these over, cash basis, and we'll see what happens. Notice the expense goes away, and so does the accounts payable. Can't have accounts payable on a cash basis set of books. The, the two are mutually exclusive. The idea of accounts payable is I recognize an expense before I paid it, therefore I have a payable. So now let's go pay the bill. Here we'll pay the bill. Landlord happy. Okay, we're done here. Notice accounts payable. Got well, it was gone, but even if I go back to accrual now, it's gone. It's paid. Come over here, refresh the PL. There's my rent expense again, 2500 because now we're on a cash basis, and since it's paid, of course it doesn't really matter even if I go back to accrual, because at this point we recognize the expense either way. You know, we've already entered the bill, and now we've already paid it, so cash or accrual, we've got the expense on the books, period. Income works the same way. Let's post an invoice to customer for services, and let's just say it's $1,000, four grand. 
Right away, accrual basis shows up on the books. Accounts receivable shows up on the balance sheet. Switch to cash. Income goes away. Switch to cash on the balance sheet. Accounts receivable goes away. Notice the cash balance hasn't changed. We already paid the rent, so we had the ten thousand less the twenty five hundred. Gets me to seventy five. Now let's get paid. Let's say customer comes in and he says, "You know what? You're so good. I'm going to pay you on the very same day you invoiced me." So now our income comes back on the books. Doesn't show up in the bank account yet because QuickBooks has a special account here called Undeposited Funds, which enables us, by the way, to group multiple payments together so that we can show them as one lump sum deposit in QuickBooks. Comes in handy because that way our QuickBooks check register matches the bank when we get the statement next month. So now we've got everything paid on both sides, income and expenses. So I've got my balance sheet, I've got my profit and loss, cash or accrual. It's going to be the same. Switch everything back to accrual. And you might be able to see the picture now in terms of how normally, because any business we run, we're posting invoices, we're entering bills. We're not usually that fortunate that we have so much cash around that we can just pay everything as soon as, as, soon as we get the bill. You know, so that we would, in that case, maybe we could be cash basis because we would never have to carry a payable on the books. We just pay the bills as they come in. Um, even then, on the income side, we'd still be posting invoices because how else are you going to keep track of who owes you money and, unless you're running a retail store where everybody pays when they come in? So that's the essence of cash versus accrual. But I want to show you something else here, which, for unfortunately, really, in my experience, not a lot of small business owners really understand this the statement of cash flows. And the reason is most people who understand this are people who are in the world of finance. But people who have small businesses that, you know, maybe fix things or sell things or whatever they do, they just don't have the background experience and training and they're not even aware of the importance of understanding the statement of cash flows. But what this does is it gets me a lot of times the owners at the same time ask me the question that gets answered by the statement of cash flows. They say, I don't understand, Seth. I have net income of $1,500. Why don't I have $1,500 in the bank? And the answer is because of what's on the statement of cash flows. Yes, I have net income of $1,500, but I also put $10,000 into the account to get things started. And that's why I actually have $11,500 in the account. Now, let's say I hadn't paid the rent. Just drill in here. Get rid of my rent payment. Lead it. Close everything else. Accrual basis, I still have the expense on the books. Now the, pa the uh, accounts payable comes back in. But the net income hasn't changed because I still recognize the expense even though I haven't paid it on an accrual basis. So I have the 4000 in income minus the $2,500 in, in rent expense. I still have a net income of $1,500. But now what has to happen is because the $2,500 was deducted from the $4,000, to get to the 1500 So now if I want to figure out what's the, because now the, the owner is going to say to me, why do I have 14000 Shouldn't I have, uh, you know, 10000 that I started with plus the 1500 Shouldn't it be 11500 So again, the answer is I have the net income of 1500 but because I haven't paid that expense yet, I have to add it back. I have to add back the 2500 to get to what's in the cash, you know, what's in, in my bank account. So the 1500 added to the 2500 adding back to 2500 gets me 4000 net cash provided by operating activities because I really I I took in the income of the 4000 and I I didn't really have any expense that I paid. So I have to add that back I get my 4000. And then of course I have the original 10000 I put in which is how I get 14000. Now where this becomes much more important and much more of a concern frankly is if uh, it's the other way around where we've paid for things but maybe we have we haven't collected all the income yet. That's usually where the business owners get more concerned because then they want to know where's my money. And that's when I have to show them the statement of cash flows to explain to them your money is not received yet because it's still in accounts receivable. So coming up, I'm going to be posting an announcement on our QuickBooks blog at quickbooksnerd.com that we're going to be doing a live webinar that's going to go in much greater detail on the statement of cash flow. So I want to invite you to go into our learning center now 
and download this class called Understanding Your Financial Statements. What story are your numbers telling you? This is going to give you a very thorough understanding of how to look at the balance sheet, how to look at the profit and loss in a way we didn't even look at here such that you can really read your financial statements and use them to tell you what's going on with the company. Download this class today and look for the announcement about the Statement of Cash Flows live webinar because this class will really give you the foundation you need for the live webinar which is coming up in the next few weeks. So I hope you did in fact get a little smarter today. Uh, if not, try another webcast. Maybe that'll do. And I look forward to seeing you on the web.